please join me for part two of our pilot valve seal replacement. We're trying to fix the leaky plungers on the pilot valve. In this segment, we will be doing a full disassembly of the pilot valve and replacing all of the seals in the pilot valve. Okay, now that we have the pilot valve and joystick assembly removed from the skid steer, let me show you what we got going on here. I've got the seals for this and a number of other things. I don't. I didn't actually get these from McMaster. I was just reusing the bag. Um, I reuse anything I get from them. I like their little Ziploc bags and I reuse them. Um, okay, the next thing we need to do is take this zip tie off. We'll replace that later. There's a little rubber wedge in here holds in a grommet, as you can see, right here, that frees that wire. And then our magnetic detent here, we're going to find the appropriate hex key for that, and that would appear to be a three millimeter hex key. Okay, next I'm going to pull all these hydraulic fittings out. And you can't see it from this end, but the four that actually go to the um, pilot stage on the uh, uh, spool valve bank are actually uh, orifice fittings. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. So you can interchange any of these four, that's fine. Uh, but you can't interchange these four with these two, which are your P and T ports. P being your pressure port and T being your tank line. <clears throat> and hopefully you can see that. Very small hole in that fitting. So those fittings are a custom fitting. for this uh, pipe. And you see the difference here. So hopefully you can see all that. And here are your two, and then here are your four. See your large holes, holes here, and then smaller holes there. These are all your work ports, P, T port. Oh, T and P, sorry. Okay, this one's actually marked T, if you can see right there. And then these are marked one, two, three, and four. If you reference that to the hydraulic schematic, that tells you what function each one of those does. Next, let's take these fittings and put them into the ultrasonic cleaner and clean up the fittings. First, I'm going to remove the existing O-rings. These are your O-ring boss side O-rings. We'll be replacing these. The O-ring boss uh, ring size was for a uh, dash six O-ring boss fitting. The face seals on these were the same size as the hose, which was a dash four O-ring face seal. Make sure your bag doesn't leak. Make sure they're all submerged. Yeah, 
in they go. And we are cleaning. While the fittings are in the ultrasonic cleaner, let's go ahead and continue disassembly of the joystick and pilot manifold. You have a M10 socket head cap screw in the bottom that pretty much goes all the way through, holds everything together except for the top part with the joystick. It has its own seal on it here. As far as we know, that wasn't leaking. Okay. Before we go any further, I'm going to show you how I keep everything on this separated. Uh, it's a good idea to keep all these spools in the same position that they came out. So what I've done is I have three, oh, sorry, four zip, uh, Ziploc bags here, all reused. And I am going to, I have them labeled 12, 3, 6, and 9, and that is for ooh, the various clock positions in which the, the uh, spools reside. I do the front with the uh, magnetic, that's 12, and then looking down from the top, 12, 3, 6, 9. And what I'll do is keep all those parts together. So we will start with our 12 o'clock position. Spring. I think I have to take this top part off first. But I'll keep them all still positioned correctly. This O-ring fell out of right here. That's where it belongs. There's our three o'clock position. Keep in mind, I'm doing that as you look from it through. Uh, I'm doing that as you look from the joystick end, not from the base end here. Six. And finally, our nine o'clock position. Okay. <clears throat> Here's our base part of our manifold. It also has an O-ring on it. You can see actually your spools, here's your, your grooves on your spool and your lands up above it. They appear to be identical, but as far as I know, it's still a good idea to keep them into the uh, portion of the manifold that they came out of. Okay, so. Okay, now you can see that the plunger here acts directly onto this spool. And that's how this works, is as you move the joystick around, the springs that we already took out push these spools back up, which pushes on the plunger. Then if you push down on the joystick, it activates the spool. The joystick handle itself rotates off, like so. Okay, now if I remember correctly, this portion is threaded in. And so this will probably be pretty tough as well, but it has to line up with this. And it's just a little universal joint that's inside of there that allows that joystick to move around. And the reason we have to get this off is this holds this plate down that holds all of the bodies for the um, plungers. 
Okay, once you have the handle off and the nut off of this portion, that gives you access to the hex screw that is down in there that you need in order to remove this portion of it. Breaking this part loose can be quite difficult too. I got it broken apart off camera once again, but once again, put it into, put this into my Swedish. If you got a big vise, that might work pretty well as well. And then that's an eight millimeter uh, hex socket on a extra long ratchet. And broke that loose. And then once that's broken loose, this just comes right off. Okay. And there's this piece. Here is the retainer plate. This holds all of those in place. Once we have the retainer plate off, we can now get to each of these housings. They are just held in place at this point by an O-ring. We'll once again start with our 12 o'clock position. And just grab it by the retaining ring right there. There you go. There is your plunger. Has a little snap ring on the bottom that holds the plunger inside the housing. We'll have to remove that. Actually not, I believe this pushes all the way back through. We'll get to that. You have an O-ring here, and then you have a special uh, rod type wiper seal that's on the inside. But we will go ahead and place this in our bag labeled number 12. This part's probably not as important if you get them mixed up, but for consistency's sake, that's what I'm going to do. So there's our 12. Now, Your seal and everything comes right out of the top. Okay. And I believe this little piston right here is what gives you uh, feedback into the joystick. So number 12. Now we'll repeat that for each of the other positions. Here's our three o'clock. I continue removing the other three plunger housings with a small pry bar. I work the pry bar around underneath the lip that's on the top of the plunger housing. If you just kind of work it all the way around, it will eventually unseat that O-ring that is in the bore, and it will just kind of pop out, and then you can pull it out by hand. Earlier in the video, I showed a 3D model that I had created on the screen. If you want to rewind back to that and pause it, that will give you an idea of what the profile of the plunger housing looks like. kind of work yeah your 12 o'clock is the only one that has slightly different diameter and a different uh, 
a different little piston on it. Now that we have all those set aside, I'm going to take apart the 12 o'clock plunger. The plunger just pops out like so. You can see all that wear up against the ring there. The surface looks okay. There's our seal. And you see it has that lip on it. It makes contact with your plunger. And there's our outside seal. back in our 12 bag seal it up until we're ready to clean it here's a clear block Ooh, I'm just going to put the 12 plunger back in this bag Plunger, plunger body. We're all ready to get those clean. Thank you for watching part two of our pilot valve leaky seal replacement. In part three, I will be reassembling the pilot valve and replacing all the seals with new seals. Please join us there. Please hit the thumbs up button, like and subscribe. And as soon as it's uh, uploaded, I will post the link at the end of this video to part three.